I want to thank EOC UNESCO and DG Mare for inviting Finland to this Accelerating MSP Worldwide event. This is a great pleasure for us and we are really excited of the opportunity to present our plan here. Uh, we just heard that there are over uh, almost 170 participants all from all parts of the almost all parts of the world participating right now in the event and I really want to warmly welcome all of you to this event. We have three speakers from Finland today. I'm coming from the ministry as Alessandro told you and I will tell you in brief how we regulate MSP in Finland and a bit of reasoning behind that. Uh, Heikki who, who speaks after me he has led the plan planning process all the way and he will tell you more about the planning itself. And Mari, uh, the third speaker, is our cooperation coordinator. She has taken care of all cooperation in, in the uh, planning process and she will tell you more about it and the methods we have used. Can you please uh, move to second slide? So Finnish, um, uh -huh. yes, thank you. So Finnish uh, maritime spatial plan is ready and it's in force and it is drafted by eight coastal regional councils jointly. So it's done on a regional level. Role of the Ministry of the Environment is to develop maritime spatial planning and to take care of international cooperation. And why Finnish government has delegated maritime spatial planning to regions? Um, this is because municipalities and regions have the land use planning mandate in Finland and territorial waters belong to the area of municipalities and regions. So it is possible to implement land use planning and building act on maritime area as well as on land. And regional councils, they have already drafted land use plans on territorial waters. Uh, I believe that the regional land use plans and maritime spatial plans in many countries are about the same kind of plans. So there was no sense uh, for Finland to draft the same kind of plans what we already have. We had to look for added value. What more could we achieve with MSPs? Uh, in the map you can see Finnish coastline which is roughly 1000 kilometer long. You can also see eight coastal regions and on dark blue color you can see territorial waters. Light blue color is our economical zone. And we wanted the MSP area to be as large as possible and we gave regional councils mandate to draft MSP also to economical zone. But they have to do the plan in cooperation with each other and with all others. So this uh, makes the planning area quite large, it's about 83,000 square kilometers. And on the southwest coast, you can see a bigger island. It's an Orland island. It's an autonomous area of Finland. And it has its own MSP legislation and it does its own plan. So Orland island plan, maritime spatial plan is not part of the Finnish mainland plan. Drafting plan to such a large area jointly on regional level is uh, really a new thing and the idea is to draw attention to the sea as a, as a whole and its potential and to boost blue growth and to strengthen sustainable use of waters and nature protection. As different planning levels and sectors on regional, national, municipal level takes part in the planning process a lot of information is brought on the table and available 
and this creates new information about the whole maritime area. Um, this creates, creates also new cooperation and new knowledge between different stakeholders. So the character of the plan finally is, uh, is that it's very uh, large area, <laughs> very general level plan, and it is not binding because the other plans are binding, like regional land use plans. But maritime spatial plan shows potential areas for different uses. And therefore it provides good information for other plans and developments. MSP include also international aspects. You can see Sweden and um, Estonia and also Russia on the map. And uh, mostly we have done international cooperation with uh, neighboring countries, uh, with all Baltic Sea countries in the Baltic Sea region, Helcom Vasap Maritime Special Planning Working Group. Helcom is uh, uh, environmental protection agreement and VASAB is a ministerial spatial planning cooperation on the Baltic Sea between Baltic Sea states and they established uh, this planning group joint planning group 2010 and Finland takes part into that group and the aim of the group is to make coherent MSPs through Baltic Sea area. Uh, the group has been actually very busy and worked hard. Uh, we have uh, ha uh, made uh, guidelines, for example, on ecosystem approach and participation to mention some of the achievements. And in addition, we have, all, of course, done bilateral cooperation with Sweden and Estonia and exchange our, our information. Can I have next slide, please? Thank you. Uh, finally, what, how do we regulate, um, regulate uh, maritime spatial planning in Finland? We did only one chapter with four paragraphs in legislation and we just uh, define the objective of maritime spatial planning objectives which are this uh, blue growth and uh, good state of waters. Uh, uh, and then also the content of the plan. We um, asked regional councils to, to um, look at uh, energy, traffic, environment, and, um, and um, energy, energy, traffic, environment, and uh, ship, uh, uh, fishing, and then recreation and tourism. But uh, as you can see from the picture on the right, they they choose 11 themes, <laughs> so it's much better. They have done more than we asked. So we then on the second paragraph, we, we regulated how it should be drafted in cooperation with all stakeholders and that regional councils, they should also approve the plan. It's each uh, regional council have a proof of its own part, the plan, but it's it's a joint plan. And here you can see that the two last paragraphs, they are about participation and informing. So we have put a lot of attention to this, um, uh, this part of a planning process, so that it's, it's really participatory process. Then we change this, um, act on economical zone where we gave uh, regional councils the right to draft the plan to EZ and then finally we uh, did a decree uh, where we uh, defined planning areas uh, in case it's difficult to do the, um, the plan to the whole area on the same time but regional councils they managed to do it jointly and uh, in practice we have only one plan we have done it uh, still in th three parts 
and the timeline that they have the, the plan have to be ready by the end of March 21. Thank you so much. This was all from me. As we heard from Tina, the Finnish legislation is very right. So we had a big opportunity, also a big adventure to create the first Finnish MSP. On this slide, you can see the, the agenda of our presentation. I have these first three bullets. I'll tell you about the authority and the organizational structure of the Finnish MSP process about the characteristics of the Finnish MSP and a little bit about the implementation of the plan. And then after me, Mari, will, you, will tell you more about the collaboration process, the identification and analysis of the existing and future conditions, the scenario work, the development of the plan itself, the vision work and the evaluation and monitoring of the plan. So let's go on so we have time for discussion and the questions. Next one, please. Okay. As we heard, the Finnish Maritime Special Plan 2030 consists of three maritime special plans in three planning areas. We could click the next. Yes, please. In collaboration with our eight coastal regional councils, the regional council of Southwest Finland, which I represent, was uh, chosen to act as a coordinator of the planning cooperation. Also, we are in the middle of the planning areas. And in this yellow area, you see what Tina told you about, that we have this Finnish land use planning system, the municipalities and regional councils that all already covers most of the MSP planning area with their regional and municipal plans. And then we have this darker yellow area, this exclusive economic zone, which is the add-on for the existing regional plans. The three maritime special plans, they were approved last November and last December separately by the assemblies of each coastal regional councils. It was all, I can, I can tell it was almost an ex very <laughs> exciting uh, play to, to watch and see all, all the assemblies do, doing this approval. But as you see, most of the MSP areas that the regional waters, they are already covered by the binding regional and municipal land use plans, in which I must say the maritime themes, they are not in a very active role. Of course, we have all these shipping shipping channels and all, all these kind of activities, but the MSP has brought much more, more, more things to consider. Next one, please. Next slide. In this section of is also, you can see the planning area. We have this internal waters, territorial seas, and then the exclusive economic zone. National land use and guidelines and regional land use, land and municipal planning covers these internal waters and territorial seas. River basin management takes account of this coastal region, one nautical mile from the baseline. And then we have various strategy from shoreline to, to the economic zone, and then also the maritime special plan with the same area. The next. Next slide, you see the examples of our planning system. In the smaller picture, there is the local master plan, which is legally binding. And then this regional land use plan, where we have all this, this all the municipal ob objectives handled. And then the maritime special plan, as you can see, more strategic, more open, not so exact. Next one. MSP is also 
in relation to Marine Strategy Framework Directive. It's a planning component of EU's integrated maritime policy. It's very close, closely linked to MS, MSFD. The environmental goals of Finland's National Marine Strategy are taken into account in, in MSP. The MSP promotes the sustainable use of the sea and supports the achievement of good marine environmental status. Application of the ecosystem based approach is used in MSP and the characteristics of the marine areas are taken into account. Attainment of environmental objectives is supported at all levels of planning. The first thing we have in the MSP, we, have, we, have, we dealt with the sea area in three zones. We have this in, inner archipelago and inner coastal waters, outer archipelago and outer coastal waters, and then the rest of the open sea areas. The protection and promotion of the good status of the marine environment, the special phases of the marine environment and land use, land sea interactions are, are taken into account in the planning. Okay, next slide, please. The planning process, which I will tell more about, more details, it started from situational pictures of the future, and then we created future scenarios, and then with help of roadmaps towards the visions, from visions to the plan itself, and, and then the impact assessment. The process has been a very rewarding learning process. Planners from A plus one, the one represents the islands of Orland, which are, have also taken part in this planning process. Regional council civil servants from the Ministry of the Environment, regional and national stakeholders, all along with the different phases, together defining the nature, structure and the elements of Finnish MSB. On top of this, several EU-funded projects have made it possible to have cross-border cooperation with Estonia and Sweden to exchange the experience with the same time running processes. Next slide, please. Finnish MSP is a strategic development document for blue economy operation that foster the good status of the marine environment. The strategy is visualized on a map. Markings on the map are used to show the different values and the future potentials of marine areas for existing and possible new activities and operation. MSB is not legally binding, but its indirect effects and impacts are recognized and evaluated in the process. The plan has a multi-time scale. The plan looks for the future and describes the target status for 2030. It identifies the current and future potentials and synergies of maritime industries and the marine environment. It identifies the needs and well-being of maritime sectors equally. And the sectors have different social and community values which the plan seeks to foster. Next, please. As we heard, we had 11 themes in this MSP. Not each theme has been studied as truly, but they have been taken account. Enabling the nature, not exclusive or restrictive, the plans opens up opportunities rather than excludes them. The plans which are shown on the food map are energy sector, maritime transport, ports, marine industry, fisheries and aquaculture, tourism and recreational use, cultural heritage, natural values, especially underwater habitats. The needs of national defense have also been taken into account and extractive industry and blue biotechnology have been recognized. Land sea act because of the Finnish planning system, land sea interactions have had a big role in the process. Okay, next slide. The last slide. 
My last slide is more about special characteristics of the Finnish MSP. We have a huge archipelago, actually several archipelagos with, a, with strong cultural heritage. Tens of thousands of islands, lots of summer cottages. And in, in Finland, we also have the so-called everyman's rights, which means you have freedom to roam, sail, fish and camp almost everywhere. The waters are already shallow, shallow. The waters are shallow already. And because of the ice edge, the land is still rising, especially in the northern parts where we have this UNESCO World Heritage Site, High Coast Quarken. And of course, we have these extreme winter conditions, especially for shipping, but also for, for all other activities. And it's maybe a scene for every planner and every architect that we always do the summer plans. We show the happy people in sunny pictures and we should also, I think we should probably have another winter version of this MSP in the next round. So this one, but my presentation, and now I want to give the words to Mari and she will tell more deeply about the Finnish MSP. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Tina and Heike. I will continue from here. Greetings from Finland. Um, and it's so nice to see so many participants in this event. Um, in my presentation, I have focused on a, on a collaboration process and the outcome, the plan itself. Next slide, please. Uh, yes, back to the agenda, today's agenda. Um, uh, I will continue from, from the content that he already uh, presented to you, and I will give a closer look at our planning process, especially the collaboration process we had. Um, and I will highlight the aspects that we found to be important when planning the Maritime Spatial Plan. Uh, then I will provide some insights of a few planning solutions, and I will end my presentation by describing how we have prepared ourselves for monitoring and evaluation so far. Next slide, please. Yes, the, the plan is only in a digital form. Here is a screenshot of the front page of our plan. Uh, the plan is provided in Finnish, in Swedish, and in English, and it consists of five parts. Um, uh, first, on the left side, there is a description of the planning framework and the planning principles, for example, how we applicated ecosystem-based approach to the um, ecosystem-based management in MSB. And also, we provide some basic information of maritime sectors and the operating environment. And next, there is all the key material from the scenario phase and the vision phase, very important for us. And then the actual plan in the map together with the map markings library. And last on the right side, there's an overall assessment of indirect impacts of the plan. Um, as this is a digital plan, it also provided us a platform for discussion throughout the planning process, as well as, as for public hearings. We had two public hearings during the process. Uh, next slide, please. Few bullet points of the content of the plan. Well, as mentioned many times, it's all digital. Um, the main content, I could say, the main content, all you have to know about the the framework, the, the, the content, the data we used, what happens, the steps, so on, is on the web page. However, of course, we also provide some PDF um, format uh, reports that you can download. Uh, for example, the plan map is in a PDF format um, for you. To, uh, it's avail avail available to anyone, and you can see, see the picture of that in the right-hand side in this slide. Uh, the, well, the plan consists of the written part and the plan map together with the map, um, map marking card library. And the written part consists, for example, the situational picture, development visions, planning solutions, and impact assess assessments for all these three planning areas we have in Finland that uh, Dina and Heik already mentioned. Uh, and when preparing the plan, we use the ARCIS Pro, and when we share our plan, we, we use the ARCIS online provided by ESRI. 
So in addition to the map markings, we can provide an access to the input data that is considered as kind of background data for our, our plan. And our plan meets the EMODNET standards in the EU level and the Helgon base map, star, base map standards in the Baltic Sea level. And this means that the plan is available in all platforms. Uh, in other, other, other platforms where one can examine it together with the other countries' plans. I think this is really important aspect if you if think, think about the collaboration between nations, especially in the future, because this is just the first round for the planning and we will continue from here. Uh, well, as uh, regards the planning solutions, I want to highlight two things. Uh, our map markings may overlap each other. We don't have any priority uses and the markings do not reserve areas for a particular purpose. What we do is that we show that the potential places for different uses may overlap. And this has to be considered in more detailed level planning. And another thing I want to highlight is that it is not possible to examine one marine sector separately from other marine sectors. All map markings are visible together at the same time. This is actually the decision we made after, after pondering it from each side, is that we want to give kind of big picture and show that so um, all the sectors that have meaningful or potential places at the same place at the same time. So that uh, whenever we have more detailed planning, the sectors, marine sectors have to take note on other sectors needs. So, as mentioned, this is a strategic plan that serves as a strong information base for maritime sectors, authorities and planners in all levels. I could take the uh, next slide, please. Uh, yes, um, in Finland, we put a lot of effort in engaging stakeholders into the planning process. Here it says it's a cooperative process, but I like more the word collaboration process. It even included some negotiation with the, with the stakeholders. We have a national, we have regional, we have local level maritime stakeholders, we have experts, authorities, but also we have a wider public. Uh, in this graph, you can see the timeline and all the different planning packages we had during the process. Each package contained a lot of workshops, expert interviews, and data analysis. So uh, I'd say that the planners have been, have been working in collaboration process with stakeholders or other way around. Because the very first step in the process was that we actually gathered established maritime stakeholders around the table in several workshops, where they bonded together what MSP means what it is, what it means, how it should be carried out. And in, for example, in 2017, we had a project called Common Approach, where we carried out the stakeholder analysis. And then together with all the stakeholders, not just the established one, we, ones we knew, knew beforehand, but, but all the relevant stakeholders in several other workshops, we pondered together that, that what is the format for the MSP? What are the steps? What happens first, next, and next, and, and what it provides us, and, and how we can come up to the outcome, to the final, final plan. And we have actually followed these steps since during the planning process. Um, in addition to the stakeholder networks in a national and regional level, uh, we prepared both internal and external interaction plan and, and established a kind of MSP cooperation network we call it that, uh, MSP called person network, that is open to anyone interested. Uh, so it means basically anyone. If you have some cottages in the coastline, you are you you can you can join us, or even though you don't any you don't know anything about marine issues, you can still join us. And if, if you are a part of our uh, network, then you get um, you receive our MSP uh, MSP newsletters and you get an invitation to any events we organize. And then, of course, we also use the social media to reach the wider public. Well, in 2019 and 2020, we had a very intense planning phase with the scenario work, with the vision work and the thematic uh, meetings. Um, I, I think that um, it is quite fair to say that the most of the content of the plan has been provided by the stakeholders in the workshops, in the thematic meetings. Um, and even when the maritime spatial planners in Finland, we have many of them because we have these eight regional councils, when they drafted the first uh, plans, 
uh, they brought them with them to the meetings with the stakeholders and asked them to reflect on those draft plans. And then we um, acted accordingly. So it was a um, really, um, I said, intense phase and very uh, collaborative phase for us. And it uh, benefited uh, both planners and stakeholders. Uh, next slide, please. Yes, thank you. Um, as Tina and Heike already mentioned, we plan from the shoreline. So it means that the coastal area and the archipelago area is very important for us. A lot of nature values, a lot of human activities. Uh, and it's, uh, that's why it's also important for us as planners and uh, important for, for successful uh, plan to be noticed by local residents and to kind of gain an acceptance towards our plan. So we put a lot of effort on reaching the locals. Uh, of course, experts, authorities, all maritime sectors, they are our core stakeholders, of course, but also locals are important to reach. Um, and just to mention, Heike said that we have this right to roam, fish, sail, and so on, the kind of everyman rights, so to say. Um, in MSP, we also plan recreational things like fishing and hunting and sailing. And, and because of that, um, the, the plan kind of influences the locals too. And if this is the case, we also have to reach them. So after the first planning phase, uh, after doing the kind of um, figuring out the situational picture or kind of baseline review, we summarized our findings and story maps that contain a lot of web maps, pictures and videos. Uh, you can see a screenshot here where we described the findings, uh, findings of underwater nature inventory program called Velmo, Velmo in, in Finland. Thank you. Then the next slide, please. Yes, I'd like to say a few words about the scenario work that we found to be really excellent phase in, in, in the planning. Uh, we had some 350 maritime stakeholders that participated in scenario work uh, phase. Uh, this is something where we pondered future paths of some kind of key change factors such as climate change, urbanization, conditions, condition of the marine environment, uh, security situation, changes in environment attitudes and so on. So uh, the scenarios, as, as you might already know very well, is that the kind of holistic descriptions of the possible futures. We didn't try, try to forecast the future, but just to be very, really open-minded to the possible paths and the outcomes as regards marine environment and maritime, maritime sectors. Um, and I, I'd say it's fair to say that this phase was really important for our stakeholders because they didn't kind of stick to their um, point of view or they didn't try to enhance their own interests, but they just pondered together in round tables what might happen in the future and what it means to their sector. Uh, really good um, exercise or phase for the cross-sectoral understanding, building the shared knowledge and all that kind of stuff. Um, and you can see the titles of our three scenarios here. We built the narrative for dancing with big businesses and under the environment's uh, terms and sea of restrictions and tensions. Next slide, please. As an example, I wanted to show a spatial approach we had during this scenario phase. Uh, one scenario, just as an example, the under, under the environment's terms, and one marine sector, the energy, uh, that is the offshore wind production in this case. So after uh, creating the future paths, the narratives, the stakeholders placed their actions on the map. And after that, uh, as you can see, the third picture from the, from the left, you can see that um, everyone had a possibility to kind of reflect um, how their own sector um, is placed in relation to other sectors. And what it means, of course, for planners, this is important information. And planning-wise, also, um, this kind of scenario work provided 
information we couldn't gather in any other ways. We could prepare general and also the sector specific contingency plans. And, and it helped us to understand what needs to be taken into account in planning anyway, whatever happens in the future. Next phase, uh, a slide please. Uh, yes, after the scenario phase, we moved towards the vision phase together with the stakeholders and we had even more stakeholders participating in our events. Now we had some 400 uh, stakeholders in our workshops. Um, and what they did first was that they uh, defined kind of shared vision for 2050 that all sectors, all stakeholders could uh, kind of underline and uh, approve that kind of vision and it's put into this one chief picture here. The main message is here, actually. For us um, in, in Finland, in MSB, uh, and for us, uh, for our maritime sectors, it is important to acknowledge that the kind of humans are integral part of the nature and should not be separated from it. Uh, and with this vision uh, picture, we want to highlight that the kind of well being of the marine environment, the well being of humans go hand in hand. The good status of the marine environment supports the well-being of humans by providing ecosystem services, of course, but also vice versa. If, so to say, we note and support the sociocultural and economic needs and aspects, there are more resources in the society to put on supporting the good status of the environment. So this is the main message we wanted to give with this vision within 2050 for our marine areas. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, and then as an example, what we did with the stakeholders and, and what was an outcome, how it benefited our, our planning, is that um, uh, the maritime sectors prepared kind of sector-specific visions for 2030, the same target year as is in our uh, maritime spatial plan. Here is uh, an example of the vision uh, text of energy sector that is in this planning round, only offshore wind production. And to formulate this kind of very short vision text, it actually took all together one national level and four regional level workshops. Uh, and I can say that after this long period of working, I can assure, the, assure you that the stakeholder actually owned these sentences in a way. Uh, and this 3D figure here is um, about energy sector, uh, is here to illustrate how we use kind of visual stimuli when we steer the discussion with stakeholders. Uh, although this figure is not place specific, it shows that the shallow area from the shoreline is really long in, in Finland and contains a lot of islands. Uh, and, and as mentioned before in Heike's presentation, we have three planning zones starting from the shoreline. We have inner archipelago, we have outer archipelago, and then open sea uh, that includes the EEZ. The zoning space uh, zoning is based on the fact that human activities, pressures, nature values, they differ between the zones. And, and thus the MSB has to take note on those aspects. Well, um, this uh, three, uh, the figure is a good example how to collect collect multiple uh, data data with one of one one picture because stakeholders um, told us with the help of this picture how they how the sector basically used to see what is the situation now and how it should be placed uh, in the future in 2030 if the developing goes as, as they wish. Uh, they also told us what ecosystem services they use, what are the important land sea interactions for them, uh, what are the possible synergies and possible conflicts with other sectors. And then they built the roadmaps to achieve the vision for 2030. You can find these pictures from our, our digital plan from the, the vision section. Uh, and when looking back, uh, both this scenario and vision work were a very practical, very hands-on way of adapting the ecosystem-based approach to planning and taking land sea interactions into account. Next slide, please. Then, uh, as I promised, I will shortly go through uh, a few planning solutions, how we came up with the map markings we did. First one is the energy production uh, that is 
as mentioned many times before, the offshore wind farming during this first planning round. Uh, well, the energy production is kind of a pinkish lilac uh, map marking the map, so it's easy to see even from that uh, PDF uh, format map. So to find the most suitable places for offshore uh, fin farming, we considered several aspects that take note on biodiversity, profit, profitability, social impacts, restrictions, and enables. And this work was done by the Finnish Environment Institute and Smart Sea Project. A lot of data uh, and modeling with some 140 variables. And just to give you one example, um, the researchers, they used kind of viewshed analysis to figure out the possible visual impacts that windmills might have for local residents. And then the established zones and analysis was used to identify the most suitable places. You can see the outcome on the small map on the right. Uh, the, the right areas are most, most suitable to offshore wind farming when you consider all these aspects that are in, in the modeling. Um, so our planning solutions considered uh, the results of this model modeling. And then the results were also discussed with stakeholders. Uh, and for example, we identified potential places in EZ based on the zonation analysis that takes note only on nature and social factors. You can't see the most suitable places in this small, small map on the right, but, but when you delete the economic factors, it looks uh, a lot different. So, of course, it is not possible at this point today to build wind farms so far from the coastline, but the plans, plan looks at the future and there is also shared vision with the stakeholders to do that. So, so that is what, what you can find and see on the map on the left, uh, left side is that we have a quite large uh, area identified as potential for offshore wind farming in the EEZ. Next slide, please. Uh, then the second example uh, about how we in our plan map ended up showing the significant underwater natural values. In, in Finland, we've had um, uh, this Finnish inventory program for the underwater marine environment, so-called BELMO program, going on since 2004, where underwater nature has been mapped. We have more than uh, 150,000 observation points already. This is a huge task and has been coordinated from the Finnish Environment Institute. Uh, these observations have then been utilized in zones and analysis to identify the high natural value areas. And then this VELMO data and zones and analysis were further utilized with some 50 experts to identify ecologically significant marine underwater areas to be used in maritime spatial planning. Uh, the criteria of EBSA, I, I believe they are familiar for you, were applied and a total of 87 so-called EMMA areas were identified. And all these areas are shown in our plan map. You can see a few EMMA areas on the map on the left side and see how they overlap with other map markings. Uh, and to note the conservation areas and programs are shown in the background, for, uh, back, background data as it is very important input data for planning, but it's something that we can't, can't designate or plan in our plan. So this is what, uh, how we define the, the significant underwater natural values. Uh, next slide, please. Yes, and the last example is archipelago map marking. Uh, in Finland, we have some 80,000 islands in the sea area with, depends on how you count, but, but with a 46,000 kilometers long shoreline. Of course, it's a little bit shorter if you don't count every shoreline around the islands. But altogether, 2.5% of the Finnish population live in the sea area most of them in the inner archipelago and inner coastal waters area. It is vital to support the lively archipelago areas also in maritime spatial planning to bring the infrastructure needs, the service need, needs, the rec recreational needs, livelihoods to the fore. And this is done by providing archipelago map marking that indicates important functional archipelago entities. And in addition to the archipelago map marking, we also identified important connections, such as functional connection and tourism recreational connection. 
and these support the well-being of archipelago areas. And as Heike already mentioned, uh, when planning from the shoreline, it is important to consider land sea interactions. Coasts and islands are the kind of hubs, hoops for maritime interactions. And with stakeholders in our collaboration process, um, it was important to bridge social capital so that we have this common understanding of how humans and marine interactions are related and what should be done in order to support the well being of marine ecosystems. So, really important, important uh, part of our MSP, this archipelago. Next slide, please. Uh, yeah, just to mention uh, as one good practice uh, is our vision videos. Uh, this slide contains pictures of, of our six uh, vision videos, kind of future stories we prepared to reach the wider public. Uh, the narrative in each video is based on issues brought up by stakeholders during the vision work phase. Uh, and one can find these videos uh, from our web, web pages uh, and YouTube. And actually, we use these videos very actively in our communication. We don't have time for any of those videos today, but, but I um, encourage you to go and get familiar with these videos. So the narrative is based on stakeholders' sayings and their message. Uh, next slide, please. Well, uh, our first maritime spatial plan was approved by last uh, December, as and as is enforced, as as Tina already mentioned. So this is the first time we face the monitoring and evaluation task here in Finland. Well, during the planning process, we prepared an impact assessment to all planning areas and to all marine sectors. And this impact assessment took note on environmental uh, impacts, uh, sociocultural impacts, and economic impacts. Quite traditional way of doing the impact assessment, I'd say. Um, and as mentioned earlier, the plan is strategic, so it's obvious that we can have only indirect impacts. And to help us planners to understand uh, what it means, we prepared kind of sector specific impact paths, you can see on the left side. Uh, this is an impact path for cultural heritage, very important marine sector in our plan. Uh, the impact path summarizes the current situation, vision for 2030, done by the stakeholders, the cultural heritage stakeholders by themselves, then the planning principles and a few key points from the built roadmap. And then it takes note on processes that may support the, the development visions, um, and it also evaluates very roughly the possible impacts and the main impacts on the sector. So this was kind of the... Um, no tool for planners to understand what might be the possible impact impact paths. Uh, and then, yes, we have started to ponder the actual monitoring and evaluation process. Uh, the picture on the right hand side, we have defined our aims in different levels of evaluation, and we have defined a bunch of indications, some 300, if I remember it's right. So, however, uh, it doesn't seem very uh, sensible way of doing things. So um, what we are doing is that we will make uh, do the main work together with the maritime stakeholders in a collaboration process. We will start next year and it takes what it takes. It might be three months, six months or the whole year, but the stakeholders will tell us what is relevant and what is not. And they will define together with the planners the impact paths for, for us. Uh, so to conclude, the collaboration is the key word in the Finnish way of, of planning the marine areas. Uh, next, and the final slide, please. So here you can see the address to our maritime spatial plan um, and the address to our MSP process pages. Really easy addresses for Finnish speakers. It actually says that uh, maritime spatial planning, and then the, uh, the second one is the maritime spatial plan, but for others. Who you, who you don't speak Finnish, it's harder to remember. Thank you.